Uh, hello everyone, this is Rajiv Eskhana from immigration.com, the law office of Rajiv Eskhana PC. I'm recording this call um, about the community conference call that we were not able to have live. Normally we do this live every other weekend, uh, every other Thursday, my apologies. I was not able to have everybody on live, but I'm going to respond to all the posted questions as uh, my office would have indicated to you when you logged in for the conference. So let's get started. The first one is, I'm going to go over all the frequently asked questions first. First one is, can one work during H4 EAD renewal? The answer is no. The usual rule for all EADs, except for F1 OPT, is that during the renewals, if your old EAD expires, you cannot work. So, for instance, in this case, Suresh Ji's wife's H4 EAD expires on 15th July. They have applied for a renewal on May 9th. Does she have to stop working if the new EAD doesn't come through? The answer is yes. Let's go on to the next frequently asked question. This is also frequently asked, and I have answered it many, many numbers of times. Can a green card applicant, for example, sibling of a U.S. citizen, remain in the U.S. say while green card is processed? And the answer is no. No one except those who have simultaneously applied for adjustment of status. There are some categories of green card where there is no waiting, so green card can be applied as a total package. In those categories, for example, the spouse of a U.S. citizen or an EB1-based green card. There is no waiting, so you can, no waiting in the visa dates, so you can stay in the USA when you apply for an I-130 or I-140 along with the 485 package. But the sibling of a US citizen is 10 years plus waiting for the dates to become current. There is too much backup in those dates. You cannot stay in the United States just because the green card is pending. Of course, if you have some other reasons, for instance, if you have a H-1 visa, L-1 visa type situation, you can stay in the USA while the green card is getting processed. Also remember, a green card can be filed through as many available categories as possible. So if you have an, a family-based green card, another member of family can also apply separately. And you can also apply through investment, also apply through employment. There's no limit to how many categories you can simultaneously apply through. Uh, I think, Tracy, that answers your question. Let's go on to the next frequently asked question. Proving ties to home country for tourist visa. This has also been a frequently recurring theme for many visas, such as tourist visa, business visa, government requires student visa, J-1 visa. Government can require you to prove that you have ties with your home country. Honestly speaking, this is an impossible criterion to prove because what is what is what are ties? Family, well, family can be visited if you were to default on your obligation to return. Real estate, real estate can be sold, money can be moved, business can be closed down. It is very difficult to really prove this criterion. In your case, Arjun, you have a question on B2 visa for your parents. How can they show strong ties to home country? They're both retired. Father was in farming, mother is a housewife. There's no property. However, my elder brother and two sisters are in India and my parents stay with my elder brother taking care of their kids. If I book a return airfare ticket, will, we, will this be sufficient? And the answer is that's a start. If you come to USA with a one-way ticket, or you try to come to USA with one way ticket, government is probably not going to like it. So would you buy a ticket before you go for a visa interview? I have, I don't know if that's how people do it. I don't believe so. I think the best thing to do is to go apply for a visa, so how it, see how it plays out. But make sure the, the visa officer understands that there is a particular reason for the visit. Um, it should be very specific, very clear. Even if they're coming for just tourism, it should be clear what their intention is, and they should be able to discuss their plans. Normally, they just give you a few seconds 
And it is very difficult to predict which way it's going to go, but it's more important to be a trustworthy individual with a clear plan on what they are trying to do, which is consistent with what they have told in their application. So I think that is the best you're going to be able to do. There's not much else you can do. Next question, can I look for a job while EAD is still pending? The answer is yes. For example, if somebody is waiting for an H4 EAD, like in, in Arjun's case again, they've got a receipt notice. Is it illegal to look for a job? Not at all. Not at all. You can look for a job. I don't consider that to be a violation of any status. You just cannot start working until you get your EAD approved. Okay. So next frequently asked question. Let's see if we have any more. I think this is, yeah, 20 questions. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now let's get to the regular routine questions. Actually, I was hoping to be able to talk to everybody live. That's why we had kept the questions down to between 18 and 20, because once they start going beyond 20, then it's very difficult to have any live conversations with new questions. But I got called away last Thursday, so I was not. Today is actually July 4th. It's a holiday. But this is the only day I had to get these things done. Last couple of days have been fairly busy. So I'm just trying to wrap this up. Um, next Thursday should be better. Next, uh, I think it's next to next Thursday, whenever we have the next community conference call. Okay, so we should be able to deal with all the fresh questions. Now, here is a question from... Jan US 99. Jan says, I'm on H1B visa, came to USA 2012, I-140 approved. Second H1B term will, uh, will expire in April 2017. Joining a new company, they'll transfer my H1B. Can they file H1B extension same time to get three-year extension? It's kind of unpredictable. When you have uh, over a year left, it is unpredictable. But, but when you have under a year, you might be able to get three-year extension. It's worth trying. USCIS has been very unpredictable in cases where there's more than six months remaining on the initial H1. But I think you will get three years. That would be my best guess. Should I wait for my company to file extension? You're answering your own questions. Absolutely. Don't uh, wait for my company to file extension. No, no, sorry. I misunderstood that question. Should I wait for my company to file? No, I don't think you need to wait for extension. But what I would recommend is don't join the new company until their transfer H1 is approved. And you, are, you are allowed to join based upon the receipt, but don't join until the actual approval comes. Can you also change to employer C? That has been very tricky. If the old I-140 is not revoked, there is no doubt you can keep changing to any number of employers each time getting a three-year extension, at least be eligible for three-year extension. But if the I-140 is revoked, things get much more murky. There are regulations pending, not enacted yet, which would allow you to keep your priority date as well as the right to extend your H-1 if your I-140 was approved for 180 days and then revoked. But I don't know what the regulations will do will they ever come into being so far they've just been pending so there is kind of the final stage next question is Ravinder Singh I'm an Indian getting married to a US citizen in 2013 in India got married she's become intimate with somebody else sir I can't really do much for you I I can't tell you I don't think you can do much and of course you cannot you can never complete the process for the U.S. green card unless she supports you. You are still in India. Your consular processing has not been done. Only the I-130 was approved. If she doesn't give you an affidavit of support, there is not much you can do. There might be something you can do under Indian laws. You might be able to file a lawsuit against her for some kind of a breach. I do not know what the Indian side of things would be. But on the U.S. side, I don't know what else you can do. You can talk with the lawyer in the state where she lives and see if there is any kind of state action possible against her, some kind of a lawsuit. But Mr. Singh, lawsuits in U.S. are extremely expensive. 
I would be surprised. See, even in smaller cities, smaller towns, you're not going to be able to easily find a lawyer who will work for you for less than a couple of hundred dollars um, an hour. In our area, for instance, the normal fees for a litigator is about $400 to $475 an hour. So it's not going to be cheap for you. Be very careful with that. Next question is, Mohit Garg worked in USA for 10 years. In 2014, came to USA on advanced parole, currently working with India branch of my US company. Green card has been sent for production. I shall get them delivered at my New Jersey address. See, I have a problem with this situation because you abandoned your 485 by, by letting your advanced parole expire. So I'm not sure what the status of these green cards is. You should definitely talk with your lawyers. There is a problem here that needs to be resolved. And it could be just a procedural issue. Maybe you can convert it to consular processing, or maybe you can refile the 485, very odd situation because green card has been approved. So it's some, something that needs to be resolved. I can't give you advice in 10 minutes of my time. This is a fairly complex situation. The rest of the questions are really minor as, as compared to whether this should have even been approved because you've been gone from USA for over two years, or under two years. If your advanced parole is still valid, I think you are okay, or, or even your H-1B visa. So I, I think there is a definite problem with that green card approval. You have two or three other questions you are talking about, actually three other questions that are each a discussion in themselves. Do I have to join the employer? You at least have to attempt to join the employer. Can I stay in India, keep Green Card active? Read our frequently asked questions on uh, re-entry permit, also known as Form I-131, as well as Form N-470. We have a lot of discussion on this in our frequently asked questions. What are the minimum requirements to stay in USA for getting US citizenship? This is again, I'll, I'll sum it up very briefly for you. You need, first of all, never to have abandoned your green card. So if you have never taken a job in USA, but you have a job in India, there is definitely a doubt whether you are living in India or USA. Second, physical stay in USA for at least two and a half years, 30 months before you file the application in the last five years and your green card must have been approved five years or more ago. So this is a very brief set of requirements, but there can be more. Don't expect to get US citizenship if you don't move to USA. Next question, Nas, I came to USA in 2010 in F2. We converted to H1, H4. We haven't gone to India. We don't have visa stamps. Green card is in process. Will it be a problem for H4? stamping considering I haven't haven't visited India in the past five years? No. No. Will the visa officer ask to appear in the primary H1B for stamping? They can, but I don't know if they have been doing that lately. So the question is, we have here on H1, H4, H4 wants to travel, get a visa stamp. Will the visa officer ask husband to also get the H1 holder to get visa stamping first? And that's within their rights, but I do not believe they've been insisting on that in the recent few months at least. Okay, so even with that 221G, as long as it was cleared in the past, I think you should be okay. But you should talk with your lawyers, Nas, make sure that there are no other complications with your case. Monarch says priority date is May 5th, 2003, F4 category, received visa refusal under 221G, Financial assets issue of the sponsor. We paid everything. One year will pass. They've taken all our documents. Do we need to do the whole process again? I don't know, uh, Monarchy, what exactly is going on at the consulate. You definitely need to contact the consulate via email as well as phone calls. If you have a lawyer, they should be contacting the consulate. CSPA, what will happen in that situation? Again, all of these things are very fact dependent. I can't make a general generic statement. I don't know what is going on. Normally, if the cutoff date, before the CSPA cutoff date, a process has been put in, 
in motion, that should not be a problem. CSPA should not, should be still in play. Normally that is the situation. As to exactly what your case is, I do not know. What will happen in the June 2016 retrogression? I can't predict that one of you. My, my advice to you is get in touch with your lawyers, have them contact the consulate, figure out the details of what's going on. Normally these ability to pay wages issues are easily resolvable because anybody can be a co-sponsor, even if there's a problem with the primary sponsor's um, assets, okay? So, um, of course, your own assets can also be used to meet the, the public charge issue. Next is Manglesh. My labor has been five, six months. Priority date was December, 20, December 9, 2015. How can I get an update from you? Only your, your lawyer and your employer can inquire about it. And normally, because all the filings are done online, your lawyers can check and your employers can check online and see what is going on with the case. For the case to go a few weeks over, your labor was filed six months ago. Current date is 31st March, 2016. Yeah, it's not that far away, April, May, June, July, about four months. Yeah, it should still be looked into. Maybe there is a letter or something from Department of Labor that was missed. So it's a good idea to follow it through. And I believe they provide you an email. I am actually don't usually get involved with details at this level. Our team takes care of all these logistics. They lead me to take care of the legal side of things. But I believe there is an email address also which your employer can write to and your lawyer can write to to make sure that your case is on track. Smart so Folly says she couldn't see the recording from the June 16th session I have posted. I've given her a link to that. Then I'm assuming that was the same question. She hasn't made that clear. I'll just double check the questions real quickly. Is there a six year limit on capturing time on H1B without get going for fresh visa? I don't understand that question. Is there six year time from the last time your H1B? I have no idea what you're asking me. Okay, now this might be clear. If I had an H1 from 2005 to 2009, and then I was an H4, can I still recapture? So what you're saying is, am I exempt from the quota? And the answer is probably because no, no, no. Hang on one second. 2009. So 2015 might be the last time. Um, Shivaliji, I'm not quite sure I can answer this question. There are some gray areas. You should definitely talk with the lawyer, the one who's going to do your H1. But I think you might not be exempt from the H1 quota. My guess. Came to USA in L1. This is M. Shan. I-94 got expired 31st August 2013. Another employer filed H-1B visa, it got approved. I-94 was valid from 1st October. So you have a September period where you had no status. I don't think you're gonna have any problem. Whatever they ask you for the visa stamping, just be truthful. This is what happened, this is just double check with your lawyer, make sure there's no ongoing unlawful presence issue. But normally having just 30 days or 40 days overstay when you are waiting for a status, and this is not even an overstay, it's kind of a um, gap in the regulations, I would say. So I, I'm not worried about that much period unless there are some other complications that I don't see from your, from your, your uh, discussion. D double check with your lawyers, make sure there are no other issues. I think you'll be fine. Santosh says, there was an intent to revoke of an I-140 based upon ability to pay wages. See, the problem is you cannot get a priority date for a case that was mistakenly approved. So government has been taking the position that look, if we approve your I-140, that priority date is yours to keep. Even if the employer revokes it, we'll let you keep it. But if we revoke it based upon the ground that it was approved in error, you don't get your priority date. And if they've given you your priority date, you should get it corrected. 
because they could raise the same issue at the I-485 stage. Even if you file the 485, if they discover the problem, they're going to decline your 485. Preetha says H1B was picked in lottery. Graduating in the first week of September, there's a few weeks gap. Aren't you covered by, uh, oh, you were on CPT. Okay. Because OPT is covered by gap, cap gap. If I file for OPT while my H1B is still pending approval, does that void my H1B petition automatically? It should not. Preetha, this is a complicated situation, needs to be discussed with your lawyer. Are you better off not working and just jumping on to your H1B once it's approved? Is it okay to apply for It's okay to apply for an OPT while the H1B petition is pending approval. I do not believe it overrules your H1, but this is definitely a, 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 a situation where there could be many, many different options. Okay, one option is to, this is an easy one. Let's say you file for the OPT and if for some reason it's conflicting with your H1B, you can always leave USA on September 30th or even earlier, go get your visa stamping done and come back using H1B visa. So that's one option. Another option is to withdraw the OPT before the October 1st date so that it doesn't conflict with your with your uh, H1. So there are several options. I'm not sure which one your lawyers would recommend. Some depend upon also what your employer's flexibility is. Okay. Question to be taken up with your employer. Vijay says, elaborating on my current situation, I need to travel on to India on emergency. My passport was stamped. Previous employer A, what visa? H1B, okay. Now, after having my H1B transferred to current employer, I've received an approval notice. Can I travel to India with my previous H1B stamping and return? The answer is yes. We have had this discussion with the consulates and they've said, no, no, you've got to get new visa stamping. And I showed them their own standard operating procedures that say you don't need a new visa. So my guess is you should be okay with the old employer's visa. Want to confirm it, have your lawyers confirm it with the consulate. They'll probably say, yes, you have to. But then, then tell your lawyers to look at the foreign affairs manual, which clearly says that you don't, that's their SOPs, they, that you shouldn't need a new visa. I think you should be fine with the old visa. K. Bros. Anoop says, L1A, EB1 category, I-140 approved, da, da, da. Can I join new employment before 180 days? Look, AC21 kicks in after 180 days, your 45 has been pending. Okay, so your 45 was filed on March 2016, right? So if you count 180 days, that comes to about September. After September, you are safe to use AC21 for a same or similar job. Even before September, you can join another employer. The only problem is if USCIS sends you an RFE, then you could have a little bit of a difficulty. Okay, so can you join? Yes, should you join? I would wait till I'm closer to September, maybe August end or so, join a new employer. You, you shouldn't travel out, get this thing resolved, I mean, there is no legal prohibition against you traveling. I just don't like the idea of traveling, coming back and answering questions to CBP if they want to make an issue of it. You're protected from some legal, from several legal angles if you've got your uh, 180 days crossed over. But this is what I would do just because I like to be safe from every possible consequence. I would join a new employer only after about August end or so. <clears throat> Once your 180 days are closer from March, 180 days come to about uh, uh, September, right? So then I would join the new employer. Once I've joined the new employer on a same or similar job, I'll have my lawyer send out an AC21 letter to the government that I've joined a same or similar employment. And then and only then I would make my plans to travel. I think then you are fairly safe. 
Then the next question, I believe it's the last question pretty much. My, this is from Ray. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Ray. It's Yeber or Eber. My I-140 was approved in 2012 with company A. I'm going to join company B. Can company A revoke my I-140? Yes. Does it cost them to revoke I-140? No. Can company B retain priority date even if it is revoked? And we have discussed this issue many, many times. Work, um, um, uh, Ray, you can take a look at my blogs. I have a complete discussion on it. The current answer seems to be that you can retain your priority date even if the I-140 is revoked, but you may not be able to get further H-1 extensions based upon a revoked I-140. So get your I-140 approval, then join the new employer and start a new green card through that. And there is, I guess, the last question that our administrator has posted. Applying for re-entry permit and working from India. I'm a green card holder. How long before should I apply before leaving USA for less than two years? Huh? That's... I guess you are asking me how far in advance should I apply before I... Look, re-entry permit only requires this that you should have filed while you are still in USA, and then you have to do your biometrics. And that takes a few weeks. You can either come back for the biometrics, or you can just file your re-entry permit, wait till the biometrics are done, and then travel. Time taken to get it approved, that depends. It's variable, can take several months. Can I apply myself? I don't advise people to file their re-entry permits themselves. Go get a, get a lawyer because this can create problems if it's not properly. You need to be properly counseled. You have to understand what this means. You have to make sure the application is filed in the right way. So like to get married in India and raise a family while in, in India with re-entry permit. It's a very, you know, if you don't live in USA and you don't have intention to live in, to live in USA, you should not think that you can keep your green card. There's going to be a good reason why you're going to India. It should be a temporary reason. If you want to raise your family in India, that doesn't look like you want to keep your green card here. You definitely need to talk with a lawyer in detail. Yeah, all of this that you're asking me, these things are not possible to plan without understanding what your motivations are. Because if you lose your green card, there's no question of getting an F2A for wife or, or, or child, etc. So theoretically, everything is possible. You can apply for a family-based green card while you're working from India. Ultimately, you have to show to the government that you intend to return based because that's what the affidavit to support requires. So there are things that, that, that have to be planned for. This is not the kind of discussion we can have without having a one-on-one -on -one consultation. You can, you can send us an email or, or my email is help at immigration.com or you can send a, us a contact through the contact us form on immigration.com. Okay, folks, that wraps up the discussion for today. I was able to get it done in about, oh, half an hour or so. So we'll, we'll see you again the Thursday after the next one, and I hope to have a live a conference with you at that time. Thank you all. I always enjoy talking with you today. It was a one-way conversation. Hopefully next time it won't be. Bye-bye. Every other Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we host um, free community conference calls. Everybody is welcome to join. Some people post questions ahead of time. You can take membership in our forums. Uh, all of the details are there on our website, immigration.com. You can take membership uh, ahead of time. And, um, you know, it's instantaneous. It happens right away. And post your questions beforehand. Or you can just log in. Uh, the phone number in all are provided 202-800-8394-1230 Eastern Standard Time every other Thursday. We have uh, free apps for both Apple iOS platform for your iPhones and iPads as well as for Android. Just look for immigration.com, immigration.com, the period dot, and uh, the application should show up.